kaddu sabzi, so pumpkin sabzi. This was dad's favorite thing to make for Ash when he was a baby and Ash's favorite thing to eat. Um, I'm gonna make a relatively small portion because these subsies are really designed to be eaten in conjunction with other foods. So um, the Indian tali or the Indian way of eating is small tastes and varied tastes to address different physiological, um, emotive and uh, metaphysical needs of the body. So your three body state. So I think that is about 350 grams of pumpkin and I'm actually gonna weigh it to see how. To see how clever I am. How close. You gonna get the visual of the numbers? <laughs> oh, 427. That's not bad though. A little bit off. Okay. So, 427 grams of pumpkin. I stand corrected. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this subsea, as always, depending on how you want the end result to be. Now, I am wanting it to be a little bit rich and caramelized and um, kind of moorish and street foodie. So I'm going to do it in my kadai, in my cast iron um, vessel. If you wanted it to be a little less impactful, um, softer in terms of it's what it's communicating and the body's reception of the subsea itself. So softer communication is communication via food that's uh, more readily digestible. It's good for systems where you're under some stress to have soft foods or softly digested foods. If you're stressed, if you're tired, if you're recovering from illness, if you're feeding young palates, young mouths, um, having that sort of softer input into the masala is beneficial. But um, on days where you're seeking energy, just punchy flavors, when you're dealing with people who love bombastic kind of communication from masala, that's when I'll tend to use the kadai. It will cook masala with a slightly harder edge. So what I'm gonna do, the nice thing about pumpkin is you duck, you <clears throat> the nice thing about pumpkin is if you cut it in the right way, like potato, if you cut it into small cubes, you actually don't need to pre-prep, you don't need to pre-roast or pre-fry because it is quite soft. So I am going to do that today. Now this is a typical Kashmiri Hindu masala, a la Ganju family. So um, it is focused on really warm, deep, complex spicy. The hero is cassia powder. Cassia powder is different to cinnamon. It's sweeter and hotter and more humid. It's also rounder. So I'm going to use, I'm gonna show you my little mix. I'm going to use a fine pink salt. It's nice and soft as a base. I'm going to use cassia powder. I will use some cinnamon quill. Mace flour which is the outer flour of the nutmeg kernel. A little bit of turmeric powder, soft chili, Kashmiri chili, and a little bit of I think I'm going to use cumin powder and not the seed. So one of the things about making a spice, the star or the, you're having it take on the starring role in masala is it's not just about aroma it's about texture so cassia powder has this incredibly beautiful full like bosomy kind of aroma it's really warm and and heating and but it is a 
quite a quite a fine dense powder and what you can see from the spices that I'm using is that they're predominantly either well they're either powdered or whole spices now if I introduce a seed element into that so come and see fennel seed nigella seed the the texture the uniqueness of the texture of that seed will actually attract the palate and attract the attention of the palate and it's more likely then that that aromatic profile becomes the starring profile in the masala not the cassia so just in order to keep the cassia as the star because pumpkin is so beautifully sweet uh, that the the depth and the density and the particular warmth of cassia powder really does um, do two things. It draws forward the savoury quality in the pumpkin and two, it um, communicates more vividly the texture of pumpkin as well. So the way masala works isn't just about creating flavour contrasts or enunciating certain flavour profiles, it's also knowing how to use spice to um, highlight textural qualities in foods as well um, because obviously whether or not we think about that texture plays an enormous part in how we receive flavor information so it's a pretty straightforward cook there's no fresh spice I'm going to use ghee because ghee is lovely and sweet and rich and fatty and that component is the nursery food component with this sabzi so kadu sabzi for me will always retain that sense of being um, like a primary nurturing food given that's the role that it played in our home ghee helps facilitate uh, that expression so over to the stove top I'm going to use um, that is um, I'm going to use two tablespoons of ghee and high heat. Now when you're dealing with vegetable oils or even mustard oil, peanut oil, and you're dealing with very high heat in a kadai, you have to be quite careful about when you add your powdered spices because those sorts of oils really do carry a lot of temperature. And then in that sort of high range of temperature, powdered ground spices tend to burn. Ghee won't carry that much heat and so it's a much safer proposition to put your dried spices in now than it is if you were dealing with a vegetable oil, even given that this is in a cast iron kadai on high heat. So um, for about 427 grams of pumpkin, um, I'm going to do a teaspoon and a half of salt. a half a teaspoon of turmeric powder, a teaspoon of cumin powder. This is important because it grounds and creates like an earthy base. Third of a teaspoon of Kashmiri chili because I actually don't want this to be too hot, spicy hot. Cassia is the star, but still it only gets a half a teaspoon. Cinnamon quill, a half. Mace flour, I don't know, a few pieces. I don't have a whole flour in here. Mm, yummy, it smells amazing. And then I'm gonna add this pumpkin in pretty quickly. I feel like there must be a better system for doing this.
Now what we're going to do is uh, just set these pumpkins sort of so they're all touching the side of the kudai and then just leave them to soften a little bit like that. Oh, I can taste it already. It's so beautiful and warm. Now one of the things to notice is that uh, there's no um, textural disturbance. So because I didn't use any whole seeds, there's a homogenous quality to what the pumpkin actually looks like in terms of it's bedded into a powdered masala. There's nothing um, that's really catching your eye other than the little bit of cinnamon stick and maize flour, so the whole slice. Um, and what's interesting is cooking a lot with buoy in Bangalore, my aunt is, and Shivani, my cousin's sister, is <laughs> how much what the end result of the dish looks like impacts the selection of masala. So for example, in yakni dishes, there's some recipes on the channel, I'll put the links below, but yakni is a yogurt based Kashmiri traditional style of cuisine, so can be mutton, can be vegetable. The turmeric's not used, chili's not used, and whole spices are removed before the end of the cook. Now, part of that is about not having really driving, um, hot, aggressive, or too structured flavor in dishes where yakni is about communicating digestibility and softness. But it's also about not disturbing the look of it because how our food appears affects how we consume it also, affects our digestion also. So yakni is uh, yogurt based and they should, that beautiful kind of creamy end result, that look is, is also part of the construction of the dish. And we're playing with that here in a slightly different way, more in a textural capacity, that the end result of this dish actually looks as smooth and warm and as nourishing as the masala that into which it's bedded. It's only been a couple of minutes <clears throat> and it's softening already. Pumpkins would like that. It's like a little checkerboard or like a mosaic, a tile mosaic. Right, shall we? <clears throat> so the ones in the middle are cooked quicker because they're a bit softer. Mm -hmm. Yum. It's like Okay, this is going to sound kind of bad, but I promise it's not. It's sort of like fruit cake, but but salty and savoury, and with pumpkin. Uh, the spicing is that uh, I guess you know for a Western palate would be like Christmas spicing, and that's the cassia. Cassia speaks really strongly to um, to that sort of flavour. So the ghee pads the pumpkin. So the pumpkin becomes almost like a souffle in terms of texture because of the ghee externally around the outside. That souffle texture in the pumpkin then translates in back into that masala and, and it takes on um, a little bit of a more sophisticated turn. So yes, it's nursery food, but the warmth, the savory quality, that little bit of saltiness and that sort of very, very mild, I wouldn't even call it heat, it's more like a resonant warmth, uh, has a very elegant expression. It's, it's savoury as well, just as I said the cassia brings out that savoury element in the pumpkin. It's like sweet plus sweet equals savoury, it's, it's one of the equations of masala.
Like how good is masala? Like how good is spice? Honestly, just this and 427 grams of pumpkin. And it's intense, it's, it's rich, it's full. You could put that on top of lamb chops. You could toss that through a salad with halloumi. You could eat it on its own, which is what Trav and I are likely to do when we turn the cameras off. Um, it's so rich and nourishing and beautiful and it shows all of these facets of pumpkin that won't express through steaming or through roasting or through any other cooking facility. Like Masala has this very unique way of creating a whole language in a produce where the appearance of that language had never occurred before. It's like pumpkin now speaks Hindi or something, like it's beautiful.